This is where most people lose interest in an upcoming movie. At one point, he was the next Spielberg. Now his name evokes derision. I don't want to go too far down Knight's history as a filmmaker. We actually covered that in our previous video about him. Instead, I want to focus on the inclination of modern movie audiences to dismiss his work outright, often acting like they are better than him. You don't have to like his movies. This isn't an apologetic on his work. I'm not trying to evangelize you, but I do want to remind you of something, something that gets lost among the very valid criticisms of Shyamalan's work. That being, though he does have weaknesses as a storyteller, Shyamalan is actually a gifted visual storyteller. Look no further than his latest film, Old. Here we have the expected Shyamalan ingredients. There's a Twilight Zone-esque premise, elements of horror, the pacing of a thriller movie, a self-cameo, and a final plot revelation that sheds new light on the story. You know, a twist. Maybe this worked for you, maybe it didn't. Personally, I thought it was a total blast and had some of the best pacing of his career. The stakes escalate at a rapid rate, taking full advantage of the possibilities laid out in the premise. But more importantly, I found his use of cinematic language to be the most interesting aspect of the movie. What I love about Shyamalan the most is that he's really dedicated to using the visual medium, the lens, to mirror the themes on the page. I know this isn't like unique to his work. A lot of directors are trying to use the visual lens to mirror the story, but what Shyamalan does is he pushes this to the limit. And what we were trying to do with the language was use the cinema verite Australian new wave language of movement and zooms, almost like it's random and it's, it's fluctuating and alive. Like time, the camera in old often treats the characters indifferently. Humans are infinitesimal blips in the history of the universe. Our lives are fleeting. Time races past us. This is clearly the message of the movie. And Shyamalan is constantly using the camera to express that. Notice how Knight pushes the frame past the character speaking, only to have it come back as if the camera is washing over them like the ocean tide. Or, for instance, notice how he often fills the image with negative space and pushes the characters to the very edge of the frame. Sometimes the person speaking isn't even visible. Not only does this add to the visual motif and theme that time is pushing past the characters, it also adds feelings of dread and unease. I often do this where I cut someone's face off. That creates a situation for me emotionally where it's unknowable. Part of the person is unknowable um, or hiding. Personally, Knight's delay in showing the aged children had me leaning forward in my seat. Instead of jump cutting right away to close-ups of the children's aged faces, something I think many directors would have gone for, Shyamalan frames the now-grown children at the edges of the screen, only the backs of their shoulders visible. We infer their horrifying aging through the expressions of another set of characters. As if to tease us, the camera glides to the left, leaving the kids beyond the frame. The anticipation is killer. Even his choice to have the mother enter the frame on the right, facing away from the camera, and then bounce immediately out of the frame is odd. But that's the point. Shyamalan is playing with conventional framing strategies on purpose. And we know this isn't an accident because he uses this unorthodox framing right at the moment when the characters in the story are feeling jarred, just as he wants you as the audience member to feel jarred. Again, he is using his visuals to mirror the events in the story. Every angle and frame is trying to elicit something in the viewer or highlight a theme of the movie. Maybe you didn't like it or it didn't work for you, cool. But to suggest he had no idea what he's doing is a stretch. He clearly has a plan with his visual approach. And that plan is more often than not very interesting. Like I said at the beginning, Shyamalan is not the only filmmaker trying to elevate the theme and story of his movie through visuals, but he is taking wild swings and experimenting in ways few of his peers are at this moment. In a time where blockbusters have less and less of a personal touch, Shyamalan is making films that are unorthodox and distinctly his own visually. So if you're someone who has given up on Shyamalan as a filmmaker, maybe you should uh, give him another try. Maybe watch old, and who knows, maybe he'll shock you. Hey, thanks for watching. Uh, I want to do more of these short video essays about five to seven minutes. So I hope this gives you a good taste of the type of content other than podcasts that will be coming your way soon. Uh, if, you, if you're 
been around this channel for a while, you've probably noticed the channel's changed a little bit, but I promise you we'll have more video essays soon. But for the most part, it will be podcast videos. And if you haven't already, you can check out our podcast, The Professional Appreciators, in the link below, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts. And uh, see you next time.